Okay, so a quick video this week, and we're discussing a fairly complicated verse to understand in uh, John 3, 13. Let's get right into it. Let's set up the scene in John 3. Jesus just began his three-year-long ministry in Jerusalem, prompting a believing Pharisee named Nicodemus to seek him out at night. John 3, 2 begins with the words of Nicodemus, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Over the next few verses, Jesus goes about telling Nicodemus about these deeper spiritual truths about heaven and being born again. Nicodemus is having a very hard time understanding these, and anyone would. Verse 9, skip down to verse 9, Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you, and I pay very close attention because this is setting up for the very complicated verse, if I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? It's then that we come to this controversial verse. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. He then goes on to say, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him. And it leads right into John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. You see, Jesus is right here. The entire context is Jesus trying to convey to Nicodemus. He's trying to convey these very deep heavenly matters, these very deep spiritual matters. Truths. So let's go right back to the verse, which is the subject of this video. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. Now many have trouble with this saying, as we read of both Enoch and Elijah of the Old Testament ascending into heaven before Jesus makes this statement. So we're asking, well now, wait a minute, was Jesus wrong? Or are we taking this out of context whenever we're pointing back to Enoch and Elijah? Let's go right back to verse 12, right before it. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. Contextually speaking, Christ is not referring to who all has ascended into heaven. That is not what he's mentioning. Enoch and Elijah have nothing to do with this conversation. The subject is set up in the previous verse, which is 12. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? So it's centering on who has the authority to tell the world of, quote-unquote, heavenly things. Once again, Enoch and Elijah, whoever has ascended into heaven, they have nothing to do with this topic of conversation. Jesus is merely making the case that only he can tell the world of heavenly things, as he has both ascended to heaven and came down from heaven, being the word of God, as the book of John tells us just two chapters before this in the opening verses. Neither Enoch nor Elijah have came back down to tell us of heavenly things. Jesus says, I'm the only one who has the authority to do this, which goes about setting up the latter clause of verse 13, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. Now, a lot of us would look at that and say, wait a minute, he's on earth, he's not in heaven. It's the Son of Man speaking on earth to Nicodemus at that very time. But the entire context fits with what he's saying. Jesus later tells them, his disciples, that he and his Father are, quote-unquote, one. And the Father is always in heaven. So the Son also is in the divine sense. He's referring to his trinity, the divine nature of Christ, how God is both in heaven, he's also on earth, he's also inside of us through the Holy Ghost. 
as the Holy Ghost is also called the Spirit of Christ and the Spirit of the Father, the Spirit of God. So it's three persons and one being. It's all one being, but it's three different persons. Jesus is saying that only he has the authority to speak on heavenly things as he has both ascended and descended from heaven to tell the world of those things. He also alludes to his divine nature in mentioning that he was both on earth and in heaven simultaneously even at that very moment. Speaking to Nicodemus, he says, I'm both in heaven and on earth right now. So this is really solidifying him having all authority to speak on these heavenly things.